The other area is your five C's, okay? This is calm. If you're engaging with someone, you know, remain calm. Right? How often are you dealing with people and you see that customer in front of you is, let's say, not engaging with you? How often does that happen to you? Hmm? Or you'd like to engage them better? Or better still, how often have you walked out and not taken the deal? Hmm? Well, right? Everyone's gone quiet. So what, we all doing loads of deals there then, right? <laughs> are we? <laughs> I thought we were here because you wanted to do more deals, right? <laughs> or increase certain things, right? How often do you actually check that? Why that is? Hmm? Yeah, stay calm and have that inner stillness. Right? Have that focus within yourself. So when you're engaging with a client, you know, they, you have a level of control. Right? Because with that control, you remain calm. Does that make sense? And by remaining calm, you have control. So it's always two-way, always asymmetric. Right? Now, once you've gone through that pace of it, and if you think about the sell and sell cycle, there's a 10-point cycle there. Right? Now, this is taking you straight down the center of the sell cycle. Sell cycle is quite monotonous, quite outdated. We like to work from a UK perspective rather than an American perspective. And Bob's going to tap into some of that as you come in and tell you where we are looking at really emphasising the UK sales um, psychology approach rather than the American outdated, um, unproven really, <laughs> models that are out there. Okay? They're proven to a certain degree, but then when you hit certain levels of sales, we're talking especially professional sales, you know, we're talking about a different science altogether. So, you know, when you calm your control, then you need to collect the relevant information. You're collecting the relevant information from your individual client. Okay? What sort of information are you collecting, do you think? Hmm? Relative to what? Customer. Right. What sort of things do you think you're going to collect from them? What they need, or what they need. Right. How often do you do that? Hmm? How often do you actually sit down and engage totally and listen to them? Hmm? And tune in to them. Do you know, remember the old radio station? I'm giving myself away. I know it's all gone digital now, but I like that a lot. Do you remember these uh, gramophones we used to have? And you used to, um, you used to dial. The, was it called the dial? Was it the yeah. dial? And you used to tune in the dial. Do you remember that? Yeah. Now, what happened when the dial or the plastic thing wasn't on the light? What happened? It's not the <laughs> hmm? it's What happened? Fuzzy reception. Fuzzy reception. Would you call that interference? Yes. Right. Interference. Right? What happens when you lock it into the light? Clear. Clear. Crystal clear. Would you agree? Yeah. So can you see where I'm going back to that communication side again? Hmm? Now let's think about it. We're saying right now our government's not doing enough, the banks are not borrowing, everything else going on out there. Is it tough out there at the moment? Why? Hmm? Decision makers, they're making decisions. Decision them. makers, they, so who's the decision maker? And the decision makers, you. I thought you were the entrepreneurs. Not if they got the bugs bunny. Not if they got the bugs bunny. What about having the noddle instead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we start thinking about decision makers. We start thinking about the actual um, path in the buck. Who do you think is going to get? our economy out of trouble. Do you think it's going to be the decision makers or do you think it's going to be you, the entrepreneurs? Right. So, why are we focusing on decision makers then? Hmm? Surely, when you are collecting information from your clients, okay, and you're working with them, are they not experiencing the same issues that you're experiencing? Yeah. Right. So, by listening to them, and engaging with them, and seeking for ways to overcome that, what do you think you're doing for them? Solving the problem. Right. But don't you need to solve your own first? Hmm? If you're sharing the same experience, am I wrong or right? But if we're going in there with a the mindset, well, the decision makers ain't doing this, or the government's this, or society's this, or there's no money out there, or it's a recession, what does that take us? Do you think your client is going to listen to you when you're talking? Do you think you're going to look confident when you're talking to your client? Or do you think you're going to look half busted? Hmm? What do you think you're going to do? Half busted or confident? Half 
Why? Because you're just relaying what's, what's happening anyway. Don't really believe it, do you? No. <laughs> Joe, so what are you really looking for at that client then? More than anything else, what are you looking for at that client? When you're going through the process of collecting information, what are you really looking for out of the client? Is it pain? Sell. Sell. Money. Mm. Right? Do you think the client doesn't understand that? They just want to sell. Hmm? Now, does it make sense, as the gentleman said earlier, to listen and communicate a sense of value so that you can get the keyword repeat sales? What does he think gives sales a bad name? Hmm? What do you think the unethic comes in? Do you think people take sales seriously? Is it taught in schools? No. Why? <coughs> hmm? So why is it we all think we can just go into business and just go and sell? Hmm? If I said to you, you're going to become an IT guru or a barrister or a lawyer, what would you tell me if I said to you I'm going to go and I'm going to represent, I'm going to go into a court of law and be a lawyer and represent? What would you say to me? Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> would it work? Huh? Would people take you seriously? Why? Not qualified. Not qualified. Right? Well, not qualified. Key area. Why am I not qualified? No experience. Not experienced. Interesting, isn't it? But yet still we all think we can go out there and sell when we're not qualified. Because as you would say, it's all about bugs money, isn't it? Making the money, isn't it? That's what drives most salespeople. But that's also what brings a lot of unethical behaviour into the sales business. Do you think your clients don't know that? Do you think they don't pick up on that? Hmm? So when you're communicating and collecting information from them, be aware that is the present time and the key time when that client is watching you. The same way you're watching them. And if you've truly got some interest in that client, and you're really truly engaging with that client, you're going to take that business. Majority of times you're going to take that business. Because you're going to deal with that client's issues. By truly engaging. And you're going to get a lot of repeat business out of that client. Because your role should be to gain a relationship from it. Not just take the order. There should be a level of long-term thinking. There should be a vision in there. And by engaging with your client's vision and you tapping into it, you will find that you now will be able to generate more business from it. It's not your fault, it's just the way it is. Too much American models going on out there. Okay? Excuse me, but I'm not nothing against Americans, but I find that you know, they're quite neurotic in certain ways. Very confident people, but quite neurotic in certain ways. We're not neurotic people. And when it comes to sales, we're very skeptical about things. But you've got to be damn good to crack it in Britain. So you haven't got to take it seriously. You know, how much do you invest? If you were going to go to a university course, how much does a university course cost a year now? Nine grand. Nine grand a year, is it? To get what? A degree. Does it guarantee you a job or money at the end of it? No. Right. But when we go out there and we start talking about investing in ourselves for our business, it all of a sudden, it becomes expensive. Would you agree? <laughs> hey? Something that's going to take us to the next level. It becomes expensive. Why? Well, it's what's going to take you to the next level and sort your life out and become a pensionable income. Question. Okay, so I'm going to put a big question mark there. Boom. I'll let Uncle Bob do all that a little bit. So let's move on. Collecting information. Then we confirm what we've said to the client. So the client knows the client's been heard. Okay? So we need to confirm it. Because you're listening, you acknowledge, you're checking in, quite you're communicating. If I listen to you and I talk to you and you, you know, it's just like a consultancy process. Yeah? Otherwise you feel like you've been hit with a hammer. Would you agree? Now you might not realise it, but sometimes in sales we get very desperate. We don't realise by Engaging, speaking fast, whatever. The client might want it, but it's like, well, you're not communicating to me. It's always your fault. <laughs> if you don't get the sell, you weren't good enough. Reality. Go home and think about it. Evaluate on it. And then when the more you consolidate, is the more when you come to the fifth C, which is the consolidation process, 
You'll be able to consolidate your clients. Thank you. Um, right? You'll only be able to consolidate your clients. Okay? If you don't learn the art of consolidating yourself, how the hell are you going to consolidate anybody else? It's your businesses. Who so say, oh, there's no money out there? Is it that there's no money out there or you're not equipped to take the money? That's the question. I'll leave that to you. I'm not saying it's wrong or it's right. That's the question. So is it that you have to raise your game? Or there's no jobs out there? Is it that you're not equipped to be able to sell to an employer? Then you're the right person. Hmm? It's mindset. Focus. Discipline. Hardcore. Attitude. 